I genuinely believe if I had started my business 15 years prior, if I was 15 years older and I'd started 15 years before, I'd have been a millionaire. I would 100% have been a millionaire. Well, it was because a frustrating one for me because I felt I did the worst job in that one because I felt like I completely lost control of the episode. Um, Saying that's controversial. I, the guy is, is fucking a phenomenon, really, isn't he? Like, and what he's done to the internet. You know, he's fascinating. Like, say what you want about him. You can fucking hate him. You can you can love him, but... what James Smith. <laughs> You're calling out James Smith? Yeah, I'm calling out James Smith. I know he's, he's a good purple belt, isn't he? Apparently so, you know. So, yeah, so yeah. Someone, someone like that. Right, should we do a Q and A then? Yeah, do it. All right, fine. So we've had uh, we've had a few questions. Um, so I'm just going to read them out, and we'll we'll probably put them downstairs as well. Um, downstairs, down below. <laughs> um, right, let's have a look. So the first question is from Liam Liam Hooks twenty eight. Has the podcast helped you guys individually with your mental health? I think for me, it's just made me more aware of my mental health. Does that make sense? Like. Just, just more, more aware. Just more, um, just more in tune with how I'm feeling, and just want, making sure that I'm not falling into any of these fucking traps and any of these problems that people are, are facing. Yeah. How yeah. about you? Um, yeah, similar, I guess. It's definitely raised a lot of awareness for me. Um, I feel like it. I don't know. I guess it almost like indirectly supports my mental health. So, because other than these episodes, obviously I, we had that other episode that I did where I talked quite candidly and, um, you know, that can be quite cathartic, but I think for the most part, I think because I'm on camera and I'm talking to all these experts, it, it just, I almost, it, <laughs> what we're trying to achieve for people, is almost happening to me where yeah. I, I talk to, I don't know, like a finance expert. So I'm like, right, I better go do this, sort my finance out. Do you ditch you guys? And I right, better get a bit, better get back to training, get more consistent. So, as a result of talking to our guests, I'm just absorbing that information and actually applying it. Um, you know, with even with Paris, it, not that we necessarily agree with everything he said, but then I went away and changed my diet and now I feel much better. I've lost a bit of weight and I'm feeling a bit leaner. So all those things are having a positive impact. Yeah. Yeah. That, again, that's, that's the whole point of the podcast. So it's, it's, it's working, you know? So. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, I can, um, yeah, I guess represent our audience and, and hopefully that applies to other people as well. So, so that's, uh, so that's that one. Uh, right. Next question. So this is more a statement than a question, but I think we can use it as a question. So it's from, uh, Harris, a BJJ and fitness. Okay. Um, he said, or well, they've said that, uh, you should do a podcast on small businesses and how, um, and how some have been successful or become successful. So I guess we, we have, so, yeah. Harris A, watch your episodes. <laughs> um, but obviously Wayne, um, Trev, um, I think there was maybe one other that we did uh, early on. Um, well, Trev's a really good example. You know, Trev's not, definitely not a small business now. He's got a fairly small team. I'm, I say small team, but I think he's got like 14 staff. Um, something around that time. He'll probably watch us and go, no, I've got 20. But yeah. it's, uh, yeah, he's come from, you know, I've, I've known Trev quite a long time and, you know, he's he's worked hard from the ground up to get where he is now you know and um like me personally i've obviously had various different businesses throughout throughout my time and yeah so i guess you're you're well positioned to, to potentially sort of talk around that stuff mate because as you say you've you've yeah. run a couple of businesses and you know one for for years and years mate so obviously that speaks for itself so like real quickly like what was your uh what was the key to success for you with those business and what was the business i think so originally when i first started i uh, 18 opened a game shop in town so i actually opened a stall in the market in plymouth panier market and i borrowed 300 quid off my granddad he thought i was fucking nuts as in pretty much everyone else did and i went and bought a load of uh, secondhand games sat there on a market store didn't make any fucking money originally and then after about two or three weeks of me sat there and no money kind of built it up and started making money and grown 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 then i um got a shop and ended up having three shops and a couple of spin-off businesses from that and a few different things and I think the key to success and like I wasn't you know it didn't make me a millionaire but it definitely gave me a really good life especially when I was younger if I didn't piss it away as much as I did I'd, <laughs> I'd be in a better <laughs> better position than I am now you know I lived in Royal William Yard renting for a thousand pound a month at like 22 which was stupid I should have bought a house you know things like that 
But I think I think the key to success, more so than anything, is just having the backbone of your business right. And people don't talk about that side of it enough. But what do you one, mean by the backbone of your business? So with with regards to your accounts making sure think like I, I started really young so when I started you know I was selling stuff and I was doing well and then you know you, you go to your accountant you got to go pay your taxes but I didn't keep any of my receipts at times and I didn't do things exactly the right way initially and once I got the backbone of my business right the back end you know the EPOS system if I needed it or you know the the different things that I had done what 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 that I thought was going to be a really good idea at the time ended up not being because I ended up wasting money on it and I ended up not having a good, again, backbone of my business. You know, a lot of businesses you go in and you want to have a look, especially smaller businesses. They've got these great ideas because a lot of people that own businesses are, you know, idea guys. <laughs> they're not always, they're not always, you know, the most intelligent, you know, they're not accountants, they're not this, they're not that, but they've got great dreams and they, they can apply that really well, but they overlook things. And, and I was very much one of those people. I used to overlook fucking loads of stuff to try and get my bigger dream, you know, of doing a second shop or opening, you know, having more products or getting this new product in or doing this or doing that. And sometimes you overlook certain things. But what I did find when I, when I eventually become successful, it was because of the backbone was right. So I had, I streamlined everything. I'd made sure everything was right. And especially in the gaming industry at the time, if I... I genuinely believe if I had started my business 15 years prior, if I was 15 years older and I'd started 15 years before, I'd have been a millionaire. I would 100% been a millionaire because I started, I was making a lot of money at the back end of games. You know, they all went digital by the time, you know, that's the only reason I stopped really is because so they it was started computer, it was computer, computer games, games yeah, yeah, like, you know, Xboxes and stuff. Um, but if I'd started 15 years before, it, it, you know, and I had the whole run of that that kind of like era, you know, I'd have, been, I'd have been rich. There's no doubt. I opened, I opened three or four shops when people were closing them. You know, game would go in under, game station went under, all them sort of shops. They were like, oh, we can't make money. I went in and I was making loads of money. So there was, there was still the need for it there, but it just, especially bigger corporations, they, they, you know, they have their way of doing things and it's all about, you know, trying to make as much money as possible, as much profit as possible. But at times it's your customer service and, you know, maybe making less to make more is always a big thing as well. Yeah, that's interesting, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shame you're not a millionaire. That would have been cool. Oh, I've been lovely, wouldn't it? You know, <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, still time, mate. Still time. Still young. All right, cool. Uh, right, next question. So this one is from James Alford Racing. How did you pair end up doing a podcast together? So I guess we've kind of answered this before, I think, but we, we, we'll go over it again real quick. But I feel like, I was thinking about this the other day, but it was, I guess it was like almost like a mutual frustration, wasn't it? Yeah. To some extent that ultimately ended up coming together. But I think, you know, we, we both have obviously been fitness professionals for years, um, you know, have, have both been men for years. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're both very aware of the the amount of misinformation on the internet um, about the, the kind of... Um, yeah, the, the the kind of not just I think not just men but women, but yeah, like fitness information, sort of all the all the different information out there is is, is it's so mixed up and it's hard to find good quality information. Um, so I think we we both had a bit of a passion for that, and then obviously, you know, I I think we've both been fans of podcasts for years. So this medium I really enjoy. I think you do the same. Um, I think both by the sound of it, we're both very similar in regard to our learning style that we're not maybe the sort to sit down and read a textbook. We'd like to see and feel and, yeah. and learn that way. And I think that medium of communication works really well for a lot of people. Um, you know, and it was something that I had been thinking about, but I didn't quite have the bottle to do it on my own. And then you'd obviously spoke to me about, uh, you know, sort of a different type of business, which, you know, sort of sounded great, but very much based around health and, and fitness and everything else. But we, we still might do it one day. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but yeah, obviously, I think the timing of it at the point and um, obviously the outlay was a bit. I think though, when you asked me to do a podcast, I was just like, I fucking love that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just a bit behind me. Like, I was just like, that, that, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure if I've ever asked you kind of how you really felt about it because obviously you, you spoke to me about that and then I, I came back and said, I've got another idea. Let me chat to you about it. And we, we literally uh, stood outside, you know, flow in the car park and, and had a bit of a chat. 
but yeah, when I first said podcast to you, because you've, you've talked openly about your, your dislike for being on camera and yeah, I fucking hate it, which is weird because yeah. I say that to people now and they're like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, you're on a podcast. Yeah. But I do. I, I've always felt awkward yeah. on camera. I've always, so what I've was, always hated it. What was your initial thought then when I said podcast to you? I don't know. I didn't think video podcast at first. So that was the first thing. Um, and then I don't know. I just like the idea of what you wanted to do as in you know for men's health and all that type of stuff and i liked your your reasoning behind doing it you know and um yeah the, as soon as you kind of said that to me my my brain goes in overdrive you know i'm one of those people that if i if i really think oh yeah that's a good fucking idea then i'll just go for it you know and Kirsty, and she'll tell you my fucking mum especially she calls me a fucking nutter sometimes because she's like you know because you uh, it's not like I always want to do different things. It's not, but if I think something's a really good idea, I'll just I'll just go for it, you know. And, then, and I said to you tonight, I was like, let's not just talk about it. Like if we're going to do it, like let's just fucking do it, you know. And, and but that was that was absolutely what I needed at the time, mate. Because like I say, I, I, had a, I had a really clear vision in my head of what I wanted this to be, um, and what I think we, we we could achieve. But I think on my own, I, I probably wouldn't have got it done, mate. So so yeah. So in answer to the question, that's that's uh, how we end up doing it together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but that's uh, been good, man. I think. Uh, Certainly, um, you know, I'm feeling quite comfortable, you know, doing this, and I think we're getting some really good content, mate. So um, I'm really proud of what we've achieved so far, mate. In I, don't, I don't even really think good. of the cameras now. No, I don't even think of it. It doesn't. But everybody doesn't says that. Work. All of our guests, all of uh, we've never had anybody come on and be like, "Oh God, it's cameras, cameras." No, they literally start talking after about five you minutes. You forget, don't you? Just forget. And then an hour and a half, two hours later, they like, fucking didn't even see any of that shit. So it's good. It's cool, man. It's a good way to do it. Uh, right, next question. So this one is from Rocket Dog 86. <laughs> fucking username. Is what was it? it? Rocket Dog. Rocket Dog 86. Fucking naughty name, man. It's yeah. a naughty name. <laughs> uh, what has been your favourite and least favourite episodes? You can go first. So me personally, my least favourite episodes have been the fitness ones, and not because the guys on them, um, because again, like Gerald and Pete and people like that, they've been great. It's just for me personally, I know a lot of the information that they're saying. So it's not, it's not, uh, I've liked a lot of the other episodes because I've learned a lot. Whereas in the fitness industry, it's not, I'm not saying I know everything because no one knows everything, but I know enough to, to, to know what they're pretty much going to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I'll do my uh, least favorite and then we'll do our favorites then, shall I? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed all of the episodes. Uh, I think I said earlier, probably the most frustrating one was the one with Paris, just because I know how knowledgeable Paris is. And I think we just, yeah, you know, it was it was one of these things that we, you know, we talked earlier as well about, that. we're not that experienced in this, you know, we're not the best interviewers. And I, and I felt, you know, I, I, I kind of take the role of directing mm. uh, the conversation, um, yeah. you know, for, in a lot of our episodes. And I, I feel like I did a bad job in that one. Um, so it's not that I disliked Paris or the episode. It was more, it was the most frustrating one for me because I felt I did the worst job in that one because I felt like I completely lost control of the episode. Um, and what I mean by that is that I was really keen for us to to go in the direction of, of jujitsu yeah. and bulletproofing the body. And then we ended up down that rabbit hole of fitness and didn't quite get ourselves back out of it. So purely, and, and it's great. It was, it was a good yeah, it's still good, good. It was a good learning good, bit for yeah. me. And it was good for me to reflect on. But looking back, I'm like, oh, that episode could have been more. It probably could have been three episodes, and all of them could have been so good. Yeah. Um, and who knows? They, they may well be. But yeah, that's that's probably my least favorite, just for that reason. What's your favorite? Um, that's loads I've really liked though. So that's an odd one. I, I don't think I have an out and out favorite. Top, top three. Top three. I have. I enjoyed John's. I had Joe Johns with the police just yeah. early on. I think John, he spoke really well, yeah. you know, good story, good laugh, any John. And uh, yeah, I just enjoyed that episode, just just hearing about the, the Met Police and stuff like that. Um, I think Miko's, I think Miko's just because his energy, you know, his energy was really good. His energy was really good. And, and probably at the time, uh, <laughs> Probably at the time, I think probably Kenny's. And the reason I'd say Kenny's is because I'm still new to jiu-jitsu. And hearing Kenny just talk about like fundamentals and how it works and all that sort of stuff. I remember at the time sat there thinking, fucking hell, there's so much I don't know. Do you know what I mean? And again, it's done in Kruger. That, you know, you, you sit there and you think, you know, you know a lot, but you don't. You know, and uh, definitely that episode made me think, oh, fucking hell, I've got so much to learn. So much to learn, you know, and... Uh, 
Yeah, I enjoyed Ricky's as well, though. I'd just say, like, I, I've really enjoyed Ricky's and I enjoyed Ricky's for a very different reason. I enjoyed Ricky's because of the, the competition size and, and his grit and determination in that. So again, like, I'm talking about these fucking episodes, mate. I've mentioned four now. So <laughs> That's it, it's, it, I, could go, I could probably mention another three, you know, that I really enjoyed. You know, there's not many, well, I don't, I don't think there's any that I've really come away with going, I fucking hated that episode, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, no, there's none. Same. Yeah, same, same here. And, um, think for, for my favorite it's, it's similar mate it's, it's hard to say one um i'll probably answer it in two parts so there was the enjoyment of recording and and producing the episode so that that was probably again john he was just a good crack uh love doing miko's just because he's an awesome guy but also the road trip in that as well so just my memories of that episode and all the behind the scenes stuff yeah that uh, was a really cool day on it yeah really good fun and then i think uh, in regard to the content um again i think both of those were really entertaining and really good fun um obviously any jujitsu episode i love because i love the conversation because i'm so passionate about it um but i think also for me i think just in regard to like quality information i think it was like the doctor episode so i think ed dr ed davies um the, the amount of detail and the way he simplified like heart disease for me was was amazing i forgot um, about that episode yeah that's a very very good episode yeah, especially so just just for that isn't it? yeah i think that was great but also similar with with trev um and talking about the will stuff because i had no clue about any of that stuff and really really opened my mind up to a new you know just a new <laughs> yeah. like yeah new amount of information um and then i guess who else have we got i've got him here in front of me so i can cheat uh simon's as well so simon's again from a finance perspective um yeah so for me the, the content wise is where I can really take some information and all of those I think all of those episodes um, I've applied something to my life and I think that's why they're probably my favourites so so yeah so again about six answers there I oh, know it's hard isn't it it's <laughs> hard uh, yeah that's definitely not one favourite uh, for me right let's move on what else we got uh, so from BJJ Motivation HQ uh, shout out to whoever that is because they've been supporting uh, the channel we share lots of our content at the moment mate so uh yeah, whoever you are, I appreciate that. Um, who's a popular guest you want to interview on the podcast? You can go first, mate. My I'll go first. first. On, yeah, I'll go first on all the others. So, uh, um, so I guess I'll answer this in two halves because obviously BJJ Motivation, we know what that, that channel's about. Um, so from a jiu-jitsu perspective, I thought Gordon Ryan initially, but I think Craig Jones is funnier. I love Craig Jones. He's, 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 he's got that good Aussie banter about him. And I think a couple of Brits chatting to Craig Jones would have a fun <laughs> yeah. um, So I'd love to get Craig Jones on. Mate, I love chat. him in his, uh, his his videos in Thailand and that. Yeah. And he's just a fucking knob, but he's right up my alley. Do you know what I mean? Like that sort of stuff is, I fucking love him. And talking about sort of Miko and road trips. I mean, fucking what a road trip that would be. Huh? I'll go over a B team. Out to Texas. Yeah. Train with a yeah. B team. And one day. Guys. So yeah, yeah one we'll, day. We'll try. Um, and then I guess from a non-jujitsu perspective, thinking about our purpose and men's health, there's there's loads. You've obviously got Alex Hamosi, who's like an absolute legend in regard to good information. Um, but then being a little bit controversial, like, I don't know, Andrew Tate, Saying that's controversial, I, the guy is is fucking a phenomenon, really, isn't he? Like, and what he's done to the internet, yeah. you know, he's fascinating. Yeah. Like, say what you want about him, you can fucking hate him, you can you can love him, but what he's creating in the on, on the platform of YouTube and, and and social media in general is is fucking it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. yeah, it's insane. And I I saw um, there's a Instagram. Uh, blogger vlogger called uh, the Tin Men um, who's like a bit of a leftist but really pro men and he was talking about uh, the issues with society when it comes to men's mental health right. and how you know with with you know sort of females if there's a problem that's affecting the mental health of females then we change society to accommodate and solve that problem where with men we don't we just tell men to sort their shit out and he was saying how Andrew Tate is a product of that situation um, and I thought that was a really interesting point. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd agree. There's there's so much of that going on at the moment, though, in there. You know, I think I think we'll find some middle ground at some point. That's what I hope. That's what that's the honest truth. You know, you you look at it, and when no nowhere near sexist. You know, we it, all that type of stuff is it's just fucking boring to me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think that we, I think that we just want some fairness. In just for everyone 
and that's the honest truth like it's so it's so one sided on certain parts of life to the other and and I think it it shows with if the the suicide rates of men you know no hundred percent but yeah that would be that would be my ideal guess I think um what are yours Mate, I'll, I'll be Do honest you just yeah. name one if you want yeah I just think um I think you nicked mine a little bit with Craig. I think if I could choose any jiu-jitsu guy, it'd be Craig. Or uh, uh, Gordon. Like uh, it's, it's obviously the cliche one, Gordon Ryan. I'd quite like to speak to someone like um, Chewy. You know, what's he called? Jiu-jitsu. You know what I mean? It sounds really cliche, but he's like one of the first YouTube video guys I watched. Or um, Jordan teaches jiu-jitsu. You know, do you know him? Yeah, yeah that, that, Canadian, that Canadian guy. Yeah. His jiu-jitsu looks really good. You know, I'd like to like to speak to him just about jujitsu. If we were talking just jujitsu, um, competitor competitor wise, yeah, it would probably be like Gordon. I I think with Gordon though, it's like I'd like to talk to him, and obviously you've got his, but I'd like to talk to him now. And the reason I like to talk to him now is because I listened to the Joe Rogan episode years ago, and uh, before even I started jujitsu. And uh, hearing him talking about cheaters on steroids and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And he doesn't take steroids. And, and obviously now he does. And he's fairly open that he's taking them and, and how it's changed his physique. And, you know, he's been pretty ill on and off for the last few years. And he's obviously taken not just testosterone. He's taken some harsh compounds because the man looks like a fucking Greek god, doesn't he? You know, well, before he got ill. And... um I just like to talk to him and just get his honest view on it and you know without all the bullshit really like of 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 the shit talking you know and talk about his health and talk about that side of stuff and how it's does he think it's helped his jujitsu because you got to remember as well he 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 you know he was winning ADCC when he was legit you know when he before he started taking tests so he was you know no one can deny how good he is but it'd be good to speak to him and say, you know, do you think it's, if you could go back, maybe, would you go back and not take it? Or would you? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I wonder if it was, um, oh, who was the guy that he had a really long match with recently? Penner. Yeah. Because I, I know he, when he lost the Penner, he, he apparently said about the strength thing. Yeah. And I wonder if it was after that, that he was like, right, fucking, let's just get on the juice. Yeah. But, you know, it is, yeah. But, yeah, that'd be an interesting chat. If you'd ever be just, honest, mate. Yeah. But, but yeah, okay, cool. Uh, what else we got? Uh, from Sam Milne 247 what tattoo did Danny have under his arm he just watched the early episodes for that mate can't they yeah a load of shit <laughs> don't get tattoos young is what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I mean like I'm out to fucking black out my arm and trying to find do something else to try and fix it but yeah no I had a shit dragon I had a rock on my elbow a rock yeah look at the actual rock yeah because you're young and you just you <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What would you have to explain the thinking behind the rock on the air? No, so it wasn't like a, I went for a rock. So I went and I liked this, um, I liked this like koi carp and blue theme that okay. I liked. So it's part of your fish. And it's on, like, it? yeah, okay. like just fucking, <laughs> just fucking, I don't know. I was young and then I went there and he fucked up the dragon. So the dragon was shit. The koi carp was all right. Yeah. And then I had like a load of blue that turned like purple and yeah. just, yeah, just, it was a mess. I had a tribal when I was like 17 as well on my arm and covering that up was a fucker and it, <laughs> that, that's it. That's it. That's what yeah. I had underneath. So, yeah. But I think uh, episode four, I think with Dan Casey, the, right. uh, the, the, the famous wife beat her episode. So, uh, yeah, you can see it all on yeah, that. You yeah. got the full view of the, uh, the wife, bed, yeah. bed chest, yeah. arm, shoulders, a lot. So go check yeah. that one out. Uh, okay, uh, this one is a question specifically for you uh, from Ash Three RZ Eight. What's better, ice cubes or ginger cubes? <laughs> he's a dick for putting this in. But <laughs> I, assume this, I assume you know what this means. So yeah, he's my uh, my step brother, right. and he uh, when he was a kid, we used to I used to watch loads of fucking South Park. Obsessed with I'm still obsessed with South Park, but I used to watch fucking loads. I used to have every tape VHS because that's how old I am, you know. And um, he he's three or four years younger than me. And he used to be a gobby little shit. He's quite a funny kid. And he, uh, he used to call me Ginger Cubes because he used to watch on South Park and Cartman used to call Kyle all the time Ginger Pubes. <laughs> so he used to he used to call me Ginger Cubes because he didn't understand what pubes were. But I just left it for years. So he probably found out at like 11 or 12 that calling someone Ginger Cubes doesn't really matter. Well, but he's he, never let it go. What, when he went to secondary school? Yeah, he yeah, chinned, so, yeah he got, probably got chinned. <laughs> we, went, we went to a shit secondary as well. So, okay. yeah. so, but, so, yeah. so what is better? Oh, ginger cubes, of ginger course. Cubes. Yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> 
All right, uh, next question from user2077. So uh, yeah, very, uh, very thought out name there. Um, do you do online coaching or just face-to-face -face personal training? Uh, what me? Or, uh, uh, it does, it's yeah. not specific, so I guess to both. Okay, so I do I do one to one primarily. So I, I'm pretty much fully booked on my one to one stuff, and then I we just uh, just actually finished um, a new app, which we're going to look to release at some point uh, called Omnia Fitness and Wellbeing. Um, yeah, we me and Paul talked about various different things that we're going to do, but primarily Omnia at the moment is is what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, that's going to be like an online platform with everything that you need. So we'll be, uh, well, me specifically, I'll probably be rolling that out pretty soon. Yeah, cool. Um, for me, I don't actually do that much personal training at all these days. Um, I work more in a senior leadership position within sort of clinical fitness and the sort of the, the, the health and wellbeing space. Um, but we'll certainly be supporting Danny with the content. Um, around you know that platform so uh so yeah so keep your eyes open for that and yeah i'll be excited look. uh we've got two more i think so <laughs> flicky fish bjj flicky fish sounds like uh yeah sounds like he's got a good god what type of girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that um are you lads planning on competing in bjj and what are your ambitions in bjj so i guess two questions um so uh, i guess for me i mean competing i don't know probably not um, and I guess this partly answers the ambition question as well. So I've, as you all know, if you've been watching, I've been in and out of jujitsu for over 15 years and probably going back, where are we now, 2023, around 2011, 2012, I was competing in MMA. Um, and prior to that was doing a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition. Um, I don't remember how exactly how many, but at least probably 40, 50 jiu-jitsu bouts I've had over the years. I think the last one I actually did was in 2015, so it was ages ago. I just got my purple belt one silver at the Bristol Open, I think. Um, so it was the last time I competed, and I don't know, I, I thought about it. We've obviously... Yeah, we've kind got of, to do it this weekend. Yeah, we, we've looked at a couple. Um, but I don't know, I'm old. <laughs> I'm fucking old, mate. And <laughs> I've had so much time off Age over the years. Age is just a number. It is, but... I think for me, I've had a lot of injuries um, and in, it's injuries that have kept me out of jiu-jitsu on many of occasion. And I think we know that obviously a break in routine uh, can really impact your, your kind of, you know, your ability to be consistent with something. So I don't know, I, 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 it's not why I do jiu-jitsu though. I think for me, I've, I've said this to so many people that when I used to do MMA, I, I dig deep in those, in those fights. Um, always did all right. And there were a couple of occasions where I was so exhausted and all I wanted to do was just fucking quit but I dig deep, dug deep and was able to pull out a win because someone's trying to punch me in the head. For me, that's a fight. Whereas jiu-jitsu, I don't know, jiu-jitsu has always been therapy for me. You know what I mean? I've always enjoyed just, just chilling and rolling and training. And if anything, over this last year, I've probably really enjoyed training with you and coaching and supporting. So I think in answer to the ambition question, that's probably my ambition, mate, is to, to, to help others at this point now. And try and support and coach you know sort of newer guys coming into it um, maybe get a bit into that a bit more if there's an opportunity to do so um, so yeah that's me what about you I'm not too sure to be honest yeah <laughs> I, I you need not. to compete a bit more I reckon yeah that's what that's what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to go down in weight so when I was competing at under 100 I know they say weight doesn't matter but a white belt it definitely fucking does <laughs> so go down in weight or go under 90 definitely think there'll people will be around my size then or i'll be bigger so that's a little advantage so i'm going to go down to 90 compete fairly regularly then i think and see see where that takes me really and you know all the rest of it will just take care of itself i think as long as i'm consistent and just enjoy what i'm doing and you know fuck all the rest of it really and it? it's just uh it's just getting on the mats and that's what i see like from from being at flow and stuff you know all the best guys the reason they're the best is just because they're there you know they fuck everything else off it doesn't really matter it's just that skill acquisition and just keep going and, and listening to people like you kenny steve hess whoever that gives me advice i'll just take it on board just keep going you know you never know do you you never know i think for you mate where you are at the moment like the yeah, the ambitions can only be one thing can't it like you say it's just keep just keep turning up and keep learning mate um i'm looking forward to seeing your competition again though i think yeah. the, i think that the first one i think you didn't do anywhere near as well as you should have done and i think it was just a shock to the system um it's it's a 
if you've never competed in, in a combat sport before, it's, I mean, for some people, maybe there's a, a, a sort of, you know, a few that, that don't, you know, sort of, it doesn't like fucking rock them a bit. But I think for most people, just the, the dry mouth, the forearm pump, the people watching, the level of intensity. Yeah. It's like Mikko spoke about, you know, I mean, I think everybody should compete. So it'd be interesting to see you compete, you know, a few more times as you just kind of settle into that intensity in that environment and actually can like perform to your ability. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just I just felt like I'd done barely any jujitsu in four matches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I come away from it like it was just a fucking it was just rolling around. Yeah, you know, just I'd, a scrap, isn't it? just a scrap. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was definitely not what I'm used to. When you know, don't get me wrong, at, at Flow we do roll hard. You know, we do roll hard, but it's just very different because I got a lot of the guys as well at, at Flow are very technical, and I'm not taking it away against people that are competing because obviously they're pretty technical as well. But like, it's a very different thing. You know, you. We're taught in a way of a lot of flow rolling, a lot of movement based stuff, especially in the gi. I was like, you know, someone gripped over to me and they just don't fucking let go. And uh, again, on my part, I wasn't breaking grips well enough. You told me that, you know, and I, not that I didn't listen, I just wasn't doing it enough, you know, and it was probably too late, you know, but I've, I think, you know, just addressing those little things and the big thing as well, taken from Ricky, you know, the more you do it, the, the better it is. So again, I'm just going to focus on getting down to 90. I'm not too far off, about five, five kilos off now, six kilos off, and then get under that sort of weight bracket. And then I think I'll just maybe do one a month or something like crazy. Yeah, no, it's good, man. And, and, and one, on, on Ricky, two things that he said I thought were really cool, actually. He said, um, <clears throat> he said one, that he, he will focus on a big tournament like a, like a big IBGJF tournament, like a world or a Euros. Yeah. And then he uses the regional ones as like testing. So I thought that was a really good mindset. And then the other thing was just don't film, focus on the outcome. Yeah, yeah, which is again, I think for my first tournament, my, my first competition, I just, I didn't warm up enough. <laughs> didn't, I, warm, I, didn't warm up I, didn't, at all. Yeah, I didn't warm up at all. I was just kind of saying shit, it? but I felt like I was going to go in there and just be fine. Just, yeah. you, you know, my jujitsu would take care of itself really. And I didn't, <laughs> take into account that someone's trying to rip your head off really and yeah. that was it but it's the it's the um <clears throat> like you know we, we being being technical you know there's certain positions certain grips that you get hold of yeah. where you're not gonna like th there's no advantage to hanging on to this so you'll let it go yeah, and yeah, 100%, yeah. but in competition people get so yeah they're, they're so like hell bent they'll just hang on to something that's absolutely pointless but it will just stifle the whole the whole, the whole match. Role, yeah so yeah it's a tough one but that'd be good to see you some more man right last question uh, this one's actually from me. I just thought it on the fly. Um, if you could roll with anybody, um, current competitor or not, um, not not like anyone, but a jujitsu practitioner, could be a celebrity jujitsu practitioner or high level jujitsu practitioner. Who would it be? Well, if I could roll with anyone right now, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I don't know. I'd probably go with someone fucking stupid like James Smith. <laughs> You're calling out James Smith? <laughs> yeah, I'm calling out James Smith. I know he's, he's a good purple belt, isn't he? Apparently so, you know. So yeah, so yeah. someone someone like that, or Darren or someone like that, just where they're just, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not black belts, you know, where they're going to, they're still going to rape me, but it would just be nice to maybe someone like that. Yeah, okay. Give yourself um, a fighting chance then. Yeah, like it's no point me saying, oh yeah, I want to I roll with Kenny Baker because yeah. I'm just going to get mauled in about two seconds. So, you know, I'll, I'll just avoid them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, yeah. even going for a purple belt in fairness, but I don't really know any any famous white belts or blue belts that I can think of off of my head. <sighs> no, probably um, so I think they, Elon like, Musk. Maybe he's a famous <laughs> white belt. I think Zuckerberg. No, Zuckerberg's got his blue belt. Yeah, I was going to say he's a blue belt. I'd give Zuckerberg a go. Russell Brand. I fancy myself. Russell, Russell Brand's a purple belt. Tom Hardy. Yeah, but again, I, yeah, he'd probably more me, wouldn't he? So he's, he, I think he's just got his purple belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Again, yeah, I don't know. I just like, I, I quite like James Smith. Yeah, I think Guy Ritchie's a black belt. Is he? I think he has been for years. I think he was one of the early like celebrity adopters of, of jiu-jitsu. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. What about wrong. you? Um, I don't know. I didn't ask that question because I had an answer. I was curious what you wanted to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, um, it would probably like, again, it's like Russell Brand, Purple Belt. He's an interesting guy. So I'd be interested to, to hang out with him. Um, but I don't know, like when I like rolling with Kenny is an example um, of just like have, being opened up to like abnormally 
like good jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like when I, when I did that seminar with Hodger and he put me in his mount and it's just a lead blanket, mate, just, it's ridiculous. So there's a little bit of me just, I don't know. Go safe, mate. Just go safe. Just I'd, throw a name at that. That's safe. I'd probably, it'd probably be someone like Gordon Ryan, mate. Cause I, I just, I just want to feel it. I just want to, uh, like, uh, like you know, it always fascinates me actually is, uh, is Craig Jones because he, he looks like, like he always talks about his gas tank shit and this and that, but he always looks like he just, he's just, he's not overly exerting himself ever. And he's, he, he fucks everyone up and I just can't understand it. I, like sometimes I watch his, his videos and he'll, he'll do something fucking really cool. And I'm like, he doesn't even make it look like as if he's, he's fucking trying. You know what I mean? Gordon's a bit like that though, isn't he? Yeah. He, he very, yeah. you know, you look at him and you think, how is he so good? Yeah. That's what I can't get in my head sometimes. How he's, he's just playing like half guard at this point. And how, how is he, how is he not passing? How is that? fucking really experienced black belt yeah. not able to pass his half guard and that's what I can't get yeah, yeah. even now I can't I can't yeah. understand it yeah so yeah so that'd probably yeah, be nice. uh, yeah just want to feel it but that's it that's questions done mate so that's uh, that's that's wrap it up um, before we do though guys again like we said we really appreciate the support um, if you're enjoying the content please subscribe to the channel like this video it goes a long way i think probably more it probably goes up a long you know more than more than you realize it, it really supports the channel it, it gives us the ability to get more guests on um and bring you better content so yeah peace so we'll yeah see you on the next one cheers guys thank you